Welcome to Talk and Tunes, and we're here today with uh, Kathy E., Bobby, and of course, Kathy, you're going to introduce our special guest that was here last week because she's going to do something special with you today. Yes, good morning. So we have Jean Drew on again. She's the world-renowned graphologist. Did I, did I say that right? Graphologist? Did. Okay. Did. Okay. <laughs> I met Jean, oh, about three years ago. She was walking her dog by Hackley Hospital, and we just started chatting, and... Um, She's pretty amazing. She read my handwriting, which was a little alarming, but no, it was, <laughs> we had fun. And so she's going to read my writing now on air. I'm going to do it right now? Yeah, <laughs> okay. well, yeah, and, and uh, she's gonna be kind somewhat, but uh, truthful. <laughs> Well, um, kind. you need... You no need. kind, no kind, no, <coughs> no, no way. Kind. I thought I'd start out with something that was... <laughs> no, uh, you don't do well alone. You need a lot of social uh, interaction, contacts, and, Very and true. so forth. Yeah. And um, you have a curiosity about the future. Even though you don't make plans that take you into the future, you're curious about it. Amen, amen. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I just never know quite where to start or stop. <laughs> Say no. <laughs> well, uh, words are important, and uh, you know you like to have the last word. Yeah. So yes, that's important to you, and you don't want people socially to be able to read you right away. You try to put on, um, you know, what would be a good. Act. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And you're used to doing that. Curiosity. I just keep seeing curiosity. Um, and you either like something or you don't like it. And if you don't like it, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> you may even say something. Yeah. And a lot of your ambitions um, include. Oh, wait a minute. What's that? What? What am I going to do with that? Where's that going to go? So you always have these questions, even after you finish something that you're interested in. Now you have even more questions. Um, yeah, let's look here at other samples. Mother was pro well. Yeah, I still think mother was probably the strongest um, influence. Good, bad, right, or wrong. We don't know that. Okay. That's not easy to see. Um, How's she yeah, doing very, so far, Bob? Very, pardon? How's she doing so far, Bob? <laughs> She's nailing it. Okay, all right, just check. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you, you don't like to know, uh, you don't like a predictable day. You, and so actually, if you think things get too unpredictable, it's you calling it out that way. Your energy actually almost encourages um, things to um, present new or unexpected that is so spot on <clears throat> did you know that your energy creates that yes. no yeah it does does my energy create anxiety for people <laughs> um, <laughs> only if you <clears throat> emit anxiety okay would it, would it and and you can from time to time yeah <laughs> again because you you actually like unpredictability but you're uncomfortable with it at the sure. same time so there's two sides to to that uh, dilemma. <laughs> anyway, um, as I said, you've, you, no, I didn't say it. You have a good value system. Uh, you may not be able to uh, articulate it all the time, but you do have it. Oh, that's good to hear. And um, so it, it, you look for insights, and you, the, your insights are stimulated by what you see. You mm -hmm. see something and go, well, wait a minute. <laughs> what might be behind that or what might that be about? So that stimulates your, that part of your being. Yeah. How am I doing? Really good. <laughs> really good. <laughs> um, the goals that are strongest in the writings I see are ones that you can follow through on pretty quickly, like within the day or sure. by the next day. Okay. Okay? And the past still influences you. It's like you're trying to bring forward things from the past uh -huh. and not, not lose them or not let go of them. Wow. 
How does that? That's that's really good. Your the way you describe things is so insightful. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and again, we're uh, hearing the analysis of Jean Drew, our graphologist here, and as she continues to pour over the writings of <laughs> Kathy Ecker. <laughs> Let's give her a little break, give her brain a little break from that. And just talk a little bit about your background, Jean, in case people weren't around last week when we kind of fully introduced you and uh, talk about a little bit how you got into this field of work. Uh, did I talk about that last week? I don't remember. Anyway, I, I uh, got into this field of work because I was born with a little bit of brain damage and I am left-handed. And um, when I started school, um, I would start to print, you know, and they'd teach you to print, and I'd hold the pencil in my, in my left hand, and it would go backwards. I'd look at the whatever they wanted me to look at on the board, and then I'd do it, and it would go backwards. And I couldn't write forward. Um, so I could write backwards, and I could write upside down, and I still can today. <laughs> and actually, if I knew about handwriting, what that actually implies is that this person who writes that way um, and has that dilemma is meant, is born to go well into the past, to bring something forward into the future. And I think I did that with handwriting. I think I did it. And uh, so that's how I got uh, you know, um, my mother brought a book home from the library about graphology because she was trying to understand what is wrong with my daughter, <laughs> what's going on here. Because uh, thank God, in when I was in in grade school, they didn't force you to write right-handed, and I don't think I could have done that anyway. I had to teach myself. But anyway, I was a book on graphology, and she started studying it, and. In the next couple of years, I got interested in it. But because I was raised, I hope they don't mind me talking about religion, but I was raised Catholic, I was afraid mm -hmm. that this was not a thing you were supposed to do. My mother wasn't Catholic. <laughs> and so I actually uh, avoided that um, truth or whatever it seemed to be to me at the time. And I would hide in the library and start looking at books on uh, handwriting. And I read books today. I, I start at the back. And I want to say, it's very hard for me to start at the beginning of something. You start at the back of a book to read it? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I read the finish. Kind of kills the mysteries, doesn't it? I've done that a lot, too. Oh, how about that? Yeah, okay. Huh. Anyway, fortunately, I, I met up um, I, I met up with someone who was uh, very astute in, in handwriting assessment and started studying with that person. And it has evolved over time that I've studied with international um, people. I don't know if anybody in the audience <laughs> listening to this would remember um, Ayn Rand or Nathaniel Brandon, very, very prominent names. Nathaniel Brandon was a, a fantastic psychologist. I lived with he and his wife and studied with him and he had me work with his um, patients. Wow. And uh, one of the people's handwriting that he gave me one day to do, he said, I'm not going to tell you who this is, but I want you to record it. And that was Ayn Rand. <laughs> <laughs> and I know why he didn't want me to, just didn't want to tell me who it was. Anyway, that's kind of Part, yeah. of my, well, part of my story. One of the things you talked about last week was the fact that um, you've worked with schools yes. and kids, right? Yes. And how important that could be as an intervention uh, to understand kids, the why, why they do things, you know. Yes. yes. And, and uh, you've worked with some, some schools even locally here. Yes. And, and let's talk a little bit about that, the, the way that you can use graphology to, to, to do that. Right, because thank God that I not only have learned to analyze handwriting, but I've also learned to analyze drawings and scribbles. And um, children, we express ourselves through the movement, form, and color. We do, that's it. And um, it is easier to understand where a child is coming from and what might work best for them. And uh, yeah, I, I love that and I want to do more and more of that. 
uh, now that now in this uh, time. Yeah, and, because and the handwriting, they're not teaching it. They're not even teaching printing in some schools. And there is, and I, I, I tried to find a copy of it to print. There is this research project that went on and proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that children today are not as smart, nearly as smart as they were several years ago. Wow. And that they do not know how to think for themselves. They know how to memorize. And it's pretty, and, and this, is a, this is a natural, uh, you know. So writing, and there's three zones to writing. Do you want me to go into that? Yes, yes. <laughs> there's three zones to writing, and they are the center zone, which is the O and the A, and everything that kind of goes uh, in that space. And then there's the upper zone, that is the L's and T's and D's, so those loops or straight strokes that go up and down. And then the third zone is the lower zone, which is the Y's and the P's and the Q's. And that stands for three different segments of our being. So that upper zone, the loops that go up, have to do with all of our senses. And physically, and it does show physical kinds of things too, from like the armpits to the top of the head. So all of our senses are really located in that area. The center zone has to do with our daily life, all those things that go on 24 hours a day, whether we're aware of them or not. And so that's where I look to see what that daily life is like. And then the lower zone has to do with our depth and our understanding. It's interesting, and it has to do with the hips down to the bottom of the feet, so I think the word understanding is wonderful. Um, but it has to do with uh, feelings and motivation and um, w whether, uh, whether we're connected to our unconscious or not. And so we, we tie those three things together. And if we don't tie them together successfully, they're trying to act and influence us on other levels. But for children, um, you know, they haven't, they're just learning and trying to, they don't know they're trying to get permission to think for themselves. Uh, but that's really what they need to learn, is how to think for themselves. So, you know, a, a, a child that you might want to discipline, but you can also say, you know, tell me what you think of that process that we just went through. And, and that tells them that it's okay that you really want to know their opinion. These things are so important. Yeah. But I've had feedback from parents who have sent me handwriting, and one boy in particular for, uh, from, um, I think it was New Jersey, uh, he, I, I asked the mother if I could write the assessment um, the way a child could read it. He was 11 going on 12. And she said, well, uh, yeah, I guess so. I said, because when I send it to you, I would like you to let, ask him if he wants to read it and let him read it. Well, she did and he did. And um, he didn't say a whole lot, but he was very excited about it. And a week later, the uh, teacher called and said, we don't, I have no idea what you're doing different with your son, but he's a changed person. And it was that he was so deeply um, feeling understood, even though he had a lot of problems. Somebody kind of understood what was triggering those problems. Yeah, you know, and I was going to say that, that there, kids learn in different ways, obviously, oh, yes. right? Yes. And, and, and our education system isn't set up that way. No. Our education system is round pegs and round holes and square blocks and square holes, right. and it doesn't fit a lot of kids. So I think having someone like yourself involved to help understand these kids can help connect to these kids on their level instead of trying to force feed them things. And that's why I think having you analyze things or someone like yourself with the graphology and that experience, and it's a very real science as you said, and it can help connect and understand why the kids are struggling maybe with with uh, being in a classroom setting or right. learning a certain way. Right, right. And the effect you've had on them for, for kids that are struggling, um, Nobody understand, understands them, but, but it's, it's, that's got to be such a weight off and so reassuring that somebody does understand them. Yeah, and I mean, I had five kids of my own, and, and uh, it, as I looked at their printing and writing, I got a better understanding sure. of what their natural talents were. You know, yeah. 
Yeah. You know, oh, oh go ahead. Yeah, right. even a parent. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, you're not supposed to be able to know everything. Sure, about your kids. sure. <laughs> You gotta read between the lines, as they say. <laughs> oh yes, read right between the lines. Yes, <laughs> that's probably where, that, comes where from. that lower zone and upper zone can, you know, can meet. Yeah. Or yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, Jean, you are just so incredibly interesting. When I met you a few years ago, and this really stuck with me. Uh, you read my handwriting outside Hackley Hospital, and. Uh, I think people in general, I don't know if they're real, really self-aware. And when you read my writing, you said, uh, wow, okay, um, you're really impatient <laughs> with people, <laughs> especially. And I actually cut you off and said, yeah, yeah, I know all that, but tell me the negatives. <laughs> and you, your response was, funny you don't see any of that as negative. <laughs> so, yeah, how I come across to people, you know, it, it, it made me be self, more self-aware. Yeah, why do you think people do psychedelic kinds of things? To try to get a sense of something mm-hmm. more about themselves, even though it takes them in a yeah. not good direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, um, yeah, if we had more honesty mm-hmm. and use the insights that are available. The, you, you said that perfectly, you know, because... I, I knew that about myself, but yeah, I just, I guess it didn't strike me as how, how that affects other people, and yeah. it made me step back. Nobody likes to hear anything negative about themselves, you know, and, but that helped me. Well, right, but the negative thing about yourself is <clears throat> oftentimes how it affects somebody else, and so sure. being willing to get to know yourself from the other person's point of view. Mm-hmm. You may or may not accept it, but I'll tell you it will. It will work on you. Right. You, you will be able to internally discern mm-hmm. whether that's the impression. Do I want to leave that impression? Right, right. I, well, I knew I knew that day we were going to be friends, <laughs> whether you wanted to or not. We're all You're friends gonna now. You're going to be my friend. We're all friends now. <laughs> yes. We, we, yeah. <laughs> we do have to take a break, but Kathy, you got something that you want us to do with the three things that we're going to talk about now. Why do you want to explain that real quick and then we'll oh, take a break? After the break, we're going to play Two Truths and a Lie. Okay. <laughs> no, so if, okay. if you don't know what that is, you will find out soon. Yes. So, okay, talk and tunes. We'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> It's Kiss. Oh, and Kathy's over there beating up the, the microphone. Okay. Are we back on? We're back on. Talking oh, tunes. Yeah, nice. we're back on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my those Prince, of course, with Kiss. And uh, they're one of my favorite songs to play at the Hilton because it always worked. Yeah. Day, anytime. I saw Kathy was dancing. She was on the table. It was amazing. <laughs> you missed it. You missed it all. You have to watch the video. Yeah, we're also going to do dance analysis later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, boy. I'm, I'm leaving before that. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't want her reputation sullied here no. on the Talking Tunes okay. show, that's for sure. Well, we are going to have Jean uh, do an, uh, one more handwriting assessment. And uh, this is George Stewart, one of my very best friends. We've been lifelong friends, junior high, high school. You were in my wedding. And we're still best friends 30 years later. Not that, yeah, oh, 30 years later. And, uh... Yeah, I I roped him into this today. He had no idea he was going to be on air. And he's handling it pretty well. And so I will let Gene take it from here. So first I have a question. Are you left-handed? No. Okay. Um, Because it looks like you were born left-handed. So I'm wondering. Anyway, um, one of the things is that you don't like people getting too close. You don't like that feeling like you're in a crowd and you can't move and you can't get out and find your own space so you need your own space we'll we'll move over and give him just a little more space space. as i crowd him that's so me your your goals are very strong and they're long term you don't live day to day you also i mean you can live day to day but your goals are you have them uh sent out there and you listen to the whole process. If somebody's talking, you listen to everything they say before you come to any personal conclusion about what they're saying. That's true. Um, <laughs> optimistic, good with details that you like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you're you're selective in what you want to uh, what you want to deal with. 
But you also need humor in your life. You need people who mm -hmm. have a sense of humor. That's where Kathy comes yeah. from. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you have uh, learned to keep it to yourself when you don't like something <laughs> or someone. <laughs> That's, That's true. So that is. true. Yep. <laughs> And decisions are decisions. And were you involved in sports? Um, uh, well, <laughs> Ever? in baseball, very little. Bit, but but you had an interest in, mm -hmm. in sports. Yeah. yeah. And you need to not sit still for any great, like, you need to do something that has rhythm to it. And maybe it's just music. I don't know. But don't sit still. Move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Questions? No, that was <laughs> yeah. like, how do you know all that? <laughs> That's so true. Well, Kathy, you know him for 30 years. Was that pretty much spot on or what? Oh, very much. Yeah. G George, he, he's probably the kindest, warmest soul of anybody I know. That's what you told me. Wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, she hasn't told no, me that. No, so yeah. you have to <laughs> say that about everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, what, what do you see about him, maybe? Being a people pleaser? No, I don't think he's a people pleaser. He, um, he, okay. No, he just wants to be his own person. Yeah. Huh. I got to ask you that too, because you said that you thought he was should have been left-handed. Yeah. Now, yeah. when you looked at mine, did you think that? Because I always thought the I way that I write, I should have been left-handed. I, I would have said it. Yeah. Okay. So I, I guess I was it. just born a sloppy writer. Okay. <laughs> well, and the That's reason fine. the reason no, I said it, I guess that is yeah. because. Um, you like to take your goal and then look back and see how it connects mm. to things you have done or wanted to do and you know what happened and so forth. So people who reflect mm. that way are often uh, born left-handed. Really? Yeah, or my ambidextrous. Yeah. Mm. Did your parents tie your arm to your side? We did that to our oldest daughter. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a right-handed world. Uh. <laughs> we didn't do that. I'm just kidding. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, really. I, I was gonna say, okay. Uh, I, I wasn't gonna. Come you just, that's a whole other show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding, folks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And again, you're listening to Talking Tunes, and we are live this week from the 100.9 Studios, high atop the Park Row Building, here in Muskegon, Michigan. So. Uh, Oh, it's, it's fun. Floor number three is pretty high, I guess. Yeah. yeah. We felt we'd probably get hurt. The bird's eye view. We're, <laughs> we're at the top of the trees as you look across the street. There you go. There you go. So, uh, yep, and we're visiting with Jean Drew from the first segment. If you're just joining us here on the show, she is a graphologist, and handwriting analysis is one of her specialties, and that's what she's been doing is uh, doing that this morning for us and talking about the importance of that and the way it can be used in many, many different ways. Um, and it's including child development and understanding kids and why they do things and um, as well as self-assessment. I was really hoping how we can better understand ourselves. I was really hoping that more could have showed up today, especially Paul, because Paul said Peter Tripp, the curly-headed kid from the third row, said if she came back in, he was going to be here and he was going to write his, his yeah, paragraph. Yeah, he promised. I, he and promised, as I was right? leaving, I said, "Do you promise?" Yeah. He said, "Yes, I promise." Well, so. Did you notice that? Well, I guess you didn't see his handwriting, so no. you didn't notice he's a big-time liar. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but I, I yeah. kind of he said even, he was going to be here. You don't even need that to read his. That would be one of the things I'd look for yeah. to see <laughs> if. Or if there was some real good reason why. Oh, he's a good guy. Sure. He's a good guy. Oh, I do. Okay, I have a question. So, with, with George's handwriting, does does it say like what job he would be good at, or? Um, well, I'd have to see um, paragraphs written. Oh, okay. Um, but but it would be uh, working independently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and not necessarily having to collaborate all the time with okay. other people. And that, that it matched his value system. Oh, okay. And that it allowed him time to analyze things. Yeah. Okay. What about mine handwriting? If if um, what does it say there? <laughs> well, we're back to that. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, <laughs> well, I got to pick. What about me? Look at it. What about me? <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> kidding. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> well, again. Oh, oh, this is. I think I'm nervous because I know. I'm not perfect. <laughs> well, not, none of us are. <laughs> Tell you know, it's really hard to keep, to keep up with Bob and I and anybody be perfect, was right, perfect, Bob? they don't it's belong in this world. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, you can just have perfect goals, but doesn't mean you ever reach them. So you're wondering what 
I'm just if it, if anything sticks out to you because I know you you've been hired to look over resumes. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. You probably wouldn't hire me, would you? Well, it depends sure. on what you were applying yeah, for. If you were so, if you, so if you were re- <laughs> what wouldn't you hire me for? Would you hire me, please? A desk <laughs> job that required you to not interact with anybody oh, and just perfect. focus on things right. that people and details that would be bad for me right bad yeah yeah, yeah. i would i know i would be really bad, no, mm-hmm. that would be bad. <laughs> and uh yeah bob now chimes in she's on it yeah. <laughs> yeah so i mean again you you just have to be involved mm-hmm. with people yeah. whatever it is you're doing yeah, yeah. okay I, I can embrace my well, negative or positive traits however you want to look at that <laughs> bob Sure. Um, it depends. You guys have married them for about thirty years. Yeah, like I say, you guys have been married for thirty years, so you must have figured figured it all out. Where right? you're using it mm-hmm. and who's influenced by it. That's all. Okay. okay. Do I get along well with others? Oh boy. Shut up. <laughs> uh, we're moving on. Like just to, yes. Could yeah, we just move game. on? Let's play a game. <laughs> let's play a game. Fine. Okay. Now we are going to play two truths and a lie. Would Would you like to go first, Gene? Oh my goodness! Okay, so I just so read gotta, them. So the way it works, guess, okay. what? Go yeah, ahead. The way it works is we've written three items about ourselves, and two of them are truthful, and one of them is not. Okay. And we're gonna try to guess which one's which. Okay, my oldest memory has defined my purpose. Second, I don't work for money, but for best outcome. Third. Running is still my daily activity in decent weather. Boy. They all sound like truth to me. I'm going to say number three is not true. The running? Well, the other one's just... Could you read number two again, please? (laughs) My... I don't remember which one I read oh. first. My oldest memory has to find my purpose, or I don't work for money but for best outcome. Okay, we got number two. Was that your oldest memory? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm uh, saying the guys. number. I'm saying two. <coughs> yeah, I guess I would go with yeah. two. Okay. So you want to know? It, yeah. Everybody yes. doesn't have to guess. Three, running is still my daily ah, activity. Okay. So Kathy, decent you're right. weather. With number three? Because <laughs> I wished it was, but when I, I broke my ankle into four pieces. Oh, you told us that last week, too. And I have all these too. pins yeah. and screws, and I jog a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> running just hasn't quite been uh, yeah. balanced enough. Okay. Oh, that's good. Okay. Right. Oscar, do you want to go next? Oh, sure. Why not? All right, here we go. Number, let's see, first one. Um, I'm a certified electronic technician. Two, I got into radio fixing cart machines and uh, the morning girl quit and asked me to do the mornings. Three, I got hit with 30,000 volts. That okay. last one would explain a lot. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that might, that might uh, have been. Is that, that. is that survivable? Yeah, well, if you well, okay, I'll, I'll we'll find out. No, I'd yeah. say uh, I'm gonna say number one is inaccurate. What was number one? Certified electronic technician. That's a lie. Okay, everybody <laughs> he's just, says he's a lie. just not certified. <laughs> yeah. Is that what he's, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, I don't think he's certified. I should have brought, I should have brought my certificate. Yes, I am. I am a certified electronic technician. I went to school for two years and became a certified electronic technician. Was in the field for six years. I would take number two. What was number two? I have a horrible memory. I got, I got into it. radio fixing cart machines, and the morning girl quit, and they asked me to do mornings. I believe that. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's that one right. happened. Okay. Wow. So you've never been struck with that much? <laughs> no, actually, I didn't. I didn't lie in any of them. I couldn't think of a good lie. So <laughs> okay. When you when you're in when you're in electronics and you work on televisions back in the old days, the tubes themselves would give off thirty thousand volts. It was mil- milliamps, so you didn't get killed with the amps. But it was somebody. I still got hit. It was called joining the 30K Club, and so all three of them, I pretty much did. Okay, so what we've learned so far this morning is Paul's a liar, and you can't lie. <laughs> I can't lie, Okay. No. <laughs> Moving right along. Pretty I'll give good. you three of mine. Uh, I once performed as Furious Fred, the hockey team mascot here in town. Uh, I grew up going to Cedar Point every summer, or I got fired for my first job. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the last one got fired because I don't see you ever getting fired. 
me, maybe, but not you. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually not sure on a couple of these, but I, I, I'm going to go with number three. Yeah, I was going to say his handwriting would in, incline me to go with number three. <laughs> that he got fired? No, that he didn't get fired. No. No, he said okay. he got fired. That's that he got fired. Oh. No? No. Oh. I'm sorry. Really? Well, that is my lie. I, I did not really? get fired from my first job. Oh. So that was my one of my lies. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's I, what I, I can. I can never see you getting fired. Okay. Yeah. I, I did fill in. Uh, Al Broton for a long time. Good buddy of mine. He was Furious Fred. Okay. Wore the costume. And there was a game he couldn't do it, and I actually suited up, and I was Furious Fred for a night. Now that's wow. funny because you know Furious Fred when at, when we were at Eagle ninety seven, yep. all those years ago. Oh yeah, uh, Jim used to be the Furious Fred, and we go with the Fury fan band, and we go around mm-hmm. all these different places for all these remotes. And one of the things that you had to do as the salesperson or the person with Jim is take off his costume, and that was disgusting <laughs> when, when you're out in like the summertime and it was like ninety degrees outside. It was <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh, that was so gross. But uh, and I can't a lot of sweat in there. I can't believe I can't believe they put that thing on and he kept it on for all that time. I don't oh know yeah. He did. No wonder he's only like ninety eight pounds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Curious Fred brings back a lot of memories there. Do well, they have a mascot now over at uh, the hockey lumberjack? Uh, yeah. Isn't that the lumberjack guy? Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. I don't know. Is Terry Ficarelli I, in that costume now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Hey, sports fans. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, so Kathy's turn. <clears throat> okay. I was once in a motorcycle accident while being chased by drug enforcement officers crossing the Kentucky-Tennessee state line. Oh, I believe that right, right off the bat. I have a misspelled <laughs> tattoo on my body, and someone got arrested because of me at a Kid Rock concert. Had all of them sound true. It could be. You know, that's <laughs> that's quite a wide. I'm sorry, range Dad. Of activities you've been involved in. <laughs> sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, the two of them are, you know. Why? Can you read those again? Because they're like so, so out there that. Yeah, I was in a mot- a minor motorcycle accident while crossing the Tennessee Kentucky state lines, being chased by drug enforcement officers. I have a misspelled tattoo on my body, and someone got arrested because of me at a Kid Rock concert. I'd say number three is the lie. Yeah. That number, sounds pretty far-fetched. Number one is pretty far-fetched, but no. knowing Kathy. <laughs> no, it's not far-fetched to see her writing. Yeah. Do y'all give? Boy. I yeah, said number three. I, I don't The count. lie is I have a misspelled tattoo on my body. Again, I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. How come Bob doesn't answer that question? Well, he probably... He, so instead of saying... <laughs> <he's>, <laughs> so instead of saying, my dad is an angel, it says, my dad is an angle, right? Yeah, yes. <laughs> I have no tattoos. Oh, okay, there People you go. People are always surprised oh, to find okay, that out about okay, me. No so tattoos, yeah. Well, she does run from the police. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But no tattoos, <laughs> so that's On good. a motorcycle, <laughs> yeah. I guess, I don't know, maybe Was not. it a Harley or just, you know, a scooter it, or what? It was a Harley. A Harley, of course it was a Harley. <laughs> George. Oh, George. You got your three? George has got George three. Is, I don't, I don't, yeah, oh, George is going to, yeah. Do you want to, we'll go on with Gene. We'll do your second one there. Or we're going to play one more round. <clears throat> oh, I was supposed to write a second. Oh, okay, you didn't? <laughs> no, oh, we didn't. were supposed to write three? I didn't know that. I thought it was I just, just thought three sentences. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay, I guess well, we're done. Well, let's take a break and then okay. we'll, we'll come back and we'll do, we'll do a couple more. See if we can get some more stuff that's, uh, I'll actually see if I can lie. <laughs> 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 Maybe that'll work. I don't know. So anyway, talking tunes, third child reunion, talking tunes. We're back, and Bob, you've got. Well, we're going to do what? Three more? Another round? Another I guess. round? Okay. So, so we got another round. So, Kathy, why don't you and Kathy go first? Okay. Let's. Oh, we're, oh, we're doing the another round. Okay. Another round. Yeah. Okay. See who's lying. Two truths <laughs> and a lie. Yeah. Two truths and a lie. Okay. As a child, I suffered from debilitating shyness. Uh, when I was 15, I won a yo-yo competition at the Woodland Mall, and my friends and I once stole some skinny dippers' clothes off the beach and left. <laughs> knowing, knowing Kathy, all those sound true again. Once again, it's like really hard. It was at 2 a.m. The wife, yeah. she's led. Uh, <laughs> you never rule anything out, quite frankly. Yeah. I'm saying number two myself number two is the lie yeah okay i don't know why it just sounds like it might be 
What do you think? What, what was number one again? Uh, I suffered from debilitating shyness as a child. I'll take number one. That's the lie? Yeah. You know oh, where the best, Bob. Yeah. OK, 